welcome to the Big Fat Quiz of Sport, the quiz for sports experts that straps on its football skates, grabs its hockey racket and whacks the shuttlecock from one end of the cricket court straight over the pole vault and into the basket. Touchdown, get in the hole, 280. <laughs> The quiz was to be held in Qatar, but I said no, because my values do not align with those of Qatar, which is why we come to you this year live from North Korea. <laughs> Our panellists tonight know a thing or two about sports. Literally, two things between them. <laughs> Let's meet the teams. Dane Baptiste is known for his fierce intellect, incisive commentary and his smart observations on contemporary life. Roisin once ate a whole jar of pesto straight from the jar. <laughs> could stop Roisin and Dane winning tonight, and that's Roisin. <laughs> <laughs> they look like they've just had a messy divorce and are now being forced to put on a united front at a parents' evening. It's Tom <laughs> Allen and Kerry Godiman. <laughs> well, it's not very politically correct, but we've booked the hilariously funny Judy Love and a bit of eye candy just for fun. It's Joel Domit. Thank you. Oh, thank you. That was just nice. That's just nice. So this is the big fat quiz of sports, not a regular one. So what are your sporting achievements? Uh, Roisin, you done anything sporting-wise? Yes, I have, Jimmy. Yeah. I once uh, was invited onto a show, uh, Comic Relief, Let's Play Darts, and I did a really good darts move. Was it that? That's the... I got, a, I got the number, I got the thing that I needed to get. <laughs> well, that's the level of expertise we're working with. <laughs> Dane, you take sports quite seriously, right? <laughs> well, I, I, think, I think my most significant sporting achievement was that I got a black belt in karate. Wow! When did you get that? Uh, 1993. <laughs> How old were you? 11. <laughs> you won't be laughing if I give you a front kick. <laughs> It's all quite camp, isn't it? Like, the fact that you win, like, a belt. Do you know what I mean? Like, like oh, you got some gold earrings and a brown belt. That's a proper sporting that's achievement, thing, That's though. a thing. I love that we're talking about sporting achievements, and in the middle of that, Judy got a crisp. <laughs> <laughs> Judy, that's still... Judy, your, your sporting achievements, what have, you, what have you done? My sporting achievement is getting on top over the age of 40 with bad knees. <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. Sure, that's a bit of cardio. <laughs> uh, Tom, Kerry, you got any uh, <laughs> any sporting achievements? I once watched a football game. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you. It's the level. There's all this, like, booing and shouting and swearing. <laughs> I go, well, they're just doing their best. <laughs> You get all these blokes going on about it, cheering. <laughs> no consonants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, team names. Uh, Roisin, Dane, what's your team called? Dane, hit Jimmy with our name. Sports and Prayers. Oh, Sports and prayers. that's lovely. Yeah. Good. Fun. Sports and Prayers. Uh, Tom, carry. He thought, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me, Tom. <laughs> oh. Too long, what's the short one? Double P.E. Double P.E. it double is. Double P.E. <laughs> uh, one. All right, so double P.E. Uh, Judy, Joel, what's your team? Richard and Judy. <laughs> Funny, because my name's not Richard. And my name's so amazing that we just stuck with it. Just going to keep that. <laughs> Richard and Judy, OK, reasonably confusing, but fine. All right, let's get on, let's get on, we'll get on with the quiz. We'll do a little bit of quiz. I have been Googling sport. You just Googled sport. I have Googled so much sport. I put sport in the search <laughs> engine. There's loads of it. <laughs> there is loads of it. Right, on with the show. Our first round is all about sporting history. Competitors in the ancient Greek Olympics competed completely naked. So when the sprinters bent down at the start of the race, the cyclists had somewhere to park their bikes. <laughs> was once an event at the Olympics. Partly, it was an attempt to fuse the aesthetic with the physical in order to create a well-rounded, ideal Olympian, but mainly, it was so there was something for the fat kids to do. <laughs> right, time for our first set of questions. OK, so it's sports history here. For the first question, it's over to professional brain box, Stephen Fry. Hello there, Jimmy Carr, Young Onion. How are you? Um, this is Stephen with a question for you. I've always been very interested in the ancient the original Olympics. And, you know, they had a sport which was a cross between wrestling and boxing called pancration. All the strengths, that means. <clears throat> and basically anything went. And it was a, a bit like the big fat quiz of sport in as much as you knew the winner because everyone else basically gave up or was rendered unconscious. <laughs> and so I want to know what 
two moves were actually illegal in Pankration. There were two. You couldn't do two things you couldn't do. So see if you can name them. So Pankration, the ancient sort of mix between wrestling and boxing, what couldn't you do? I think you can work this out. They're, two th they're pretty obvious things you won't be able to do. Oh, yes, Kerry has a so question. So were they naked? Yeah, they were nude. They were all naked all the time. It must have been an absolute nightmare during the relay. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you're going to have a point for, for both fouls, but what two things were fouls in Pankration? Finger in. <laughs> Question number two. Basketball was invented in 1891 as a way of keeping students active indoors, but what innovation to the game did it take them 21 years to come up with? So basketball was created in 1891. It took them 21 years to come up with something that seems pretty obvious to me. What did it take them 21 years to come up with? All right, question number three in this first round. At the Seoul 88 Olympics, Ben Johnson won the 100-metre final in world record time, but the race was later described as the dirtiest race in history. Why? All right, question number four in this round. The Tour de France has been running for over 120 years. What was it common practice to do until it was outlawed in 1965? So what could you do in the Tour de France until 1965? <laughs> For ourselves. We're just gonna have fun ourselves. This is good. It, <laughs> might, it might be good. No, it was really funny, but she said it in French and it doesn't really translate that great, so sorry, everyone. <laughs> Can we get extra time? Like I a dyslexic to... in an yeah. exam, yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> sure. Well, you can be on channel four plus one. <laughs> question number five. Last question in this round. In 1973, Billie Jean King and Bobby Riggs played out the iconic Battle of the Sexes tennis match. Before the match started, they gave each other insulting gifts. What were they? Were they wishing each other luck or wishing they not No, they were, they were not wishing... There was no love lost in the match. Basically, Riggs said, female tennis players are useless, and he said, I will beat you, and they played a match. Are you, what are you eating, Judy? What are you having? Hula hoops. You're having hula hoops? Okay. Okay. To represent the Olympic rings? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be very sporty. Okay. All right, time for some answers? Yes. Come on. Put in, put in all your answers, Joel. Put in all your answers! Get the questions done. Finish up quickly. End of round one. Catchy. <laughs> Question number one. Stephen Fry wanted to know what were the two recognised fouls in Pankration? Oh, my God, that was Stephen Fry. If anyone is gambling on this as to who's going to win, oh. if your money's on Judy, oh. you're, uh, you're going to get odds on that. <laughs> All right, so what, what do you think the fouls were? Uh, Roisin, Dame? No biting. No biting. No gouging. No biting, no and gouging. no whispering sweet nothings. <laughs> You've given three answers there, and the first two are absolutely right. And the third one was sort of generally agreed upon. Uh, yeah, People I think that said was... it was out of order. It's an unwritten rule. It's not illegal, but it's, it's like... Frowned upon. It's frowned upon. It's like with a steel chair in WWE. Yeah. You shouldn't do it, but if it happens, everyone's like... <laughs> yeah. You've got a fight going. <laughs> Tom, did, Kerry, did you get this? I no, we were fixated on the nudity part of it, actually, Jimmy. What did you say? Rubbing your bum... You can't... ..hole up against someone. <laughs> <laughs> like... That weirdly... That weirdly comes up in a question later on. Stay tuned. <laughs> and we said pupilling as well, cos that would be so painful, wouldn't it? To be pulled by... Just when you're in that position and then... Oh, <laughs> yeah. What is it thinking about? Pu pupilling. Okay, pupilling. No, it was biting and gouging. They got it exactly. Judy, Joel, did you get this? We went for gouging and fingering. <laughs> well, you know the same thing. Like if you, same you get thing. one point for that, you get two points because you got both. Yeah. You get no points. OK, next one. <laughs> All right. I asked you what innovation took 21 years to be introduced into basketball. What, what did you think? Tom, Kerry, did you get this? Um, we said that organ they play. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> That's baseball. <laughs> what are we talking about? Basketball. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Do I look American? He's <laughs> putting a lid on it, putting a lid on the net, like making it have a hole in it. <laughs> because before it used to be a bucket, and then they were like, if we put a hole in it, it will come through and someone hasn't got to climb up and get it. That is the right answer. Ooh. Thank you. Judy, Joel, what did you get? Yeah, we, we put one well, with a hoop. Yeah. And I said hoop like Judy's crisps, which I just realised doesn't have an H in it. <laughs> I spelled Chris C H R I S 
the earth. Regine Dane, what did you put? We said it took them 25 years to desegregate it. And discover white people can't jump. <laughs> well, uh, t take a look at this. It's incredible. OK, so here's some kids playing. Yeah, that's how they used to play. And this guy came uh, along... Wow. Whoa, there you go. <laughs> so if you forgot well, the this... stick, it was just one it's love, a... all going home. <laughs> OK, incredibly, basketball it took them 21 years to discover the net. All right, I asked you why the 100-metre final at the Seoul 88 Olympics became known as the dirtiest race in history. What did you all put? Judy, Joel, did you get this? Yeah, Judy got this, but she leaned over to me and whispered, drugs, and I thought she was offering them to me. <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out it's the answer. Right. right, did you get this? That yeah. they shat themselves. <laughs> That's coming up later as well, stay tuned. No, um... because no, I've been Googling sport, People shit themselves all the time. True. Mm. It's a thing. Really? It's what? True. Is it a drilling in? Is it what is it? Well, they Not... can't go off to the loo, can they? So they just have to shit and go. Mm. <laughs> I don't think it happens in ice skating. <laughs> That would be no, awful, wouldn't it? Imagine if Paul and Dean had done that. <laughs> on the spin. Can you imagine? On the, on the spin. <laughs> oh. Did you get this, Dane? Roshi? We we thought we did. We thought it was a dirty race because there was no toilet paper available, which I think bounces quite nicely off of Kerry's theory. <laughs> Well, Judy and Joel get, get the point. It was because Ben Johnson tested positive for performance-enhancing drugs, and of the eight runners in that 100-metre final, only two were never linked to drug use. Wow. So that wow. means if I'd been in there, I would have got bronze. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Imagine those two who didn't use the drugs, how boring they'd be at the back as they well. Did, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're fine. The rest of the race, like, woo! <laughs> Guys, I think you're all getting wrong the kind of drugs they're using. You know, just, just, I'm just here to take the comedy out of this show. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not doing, like, an E? No, they're not. No! Like, it'd be quite fun, though, to imagine the Olympics with everyone doing the wrong drugs. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I would just, I would like, watch... weightlifting. Just like, oh, no, we've all done ketamine! <laughs> <laughs> oh. They're all on coke talking about their career. <laughs> everyone in the 100 metres talking about the podcast they're going to make. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I asked you what was common practice at the Tour de France up until 1965. What did you all think? Well, it's France, isn't it? So we said, is it getting someone pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I mean, when we show you the footage, I mean, it could happen, I suppose. Go on, what, what did you think? We went with drugs, drugs. again. <laughs> um, this time I leant over to Judy and I whispered drugs and she thought that I was offering them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I, I said, yeah. to, you're close with drugs. But what, what, what did you put? <laughs> no wheelies. <laughs> Oh, no, they yeah. could do wheelies, not no wheelies. They could do wheelies up until then. Uh, well, you're, you're not right. Have a look. Ça, c'est un des moments les plus importants du Tour de France, c'est la chasse à la canette. Ils entrent dans le bistrot, ils bousculent tout le monde. Ils ne vont pas jusqu'à piller, mais enfin, ils réclament, ils prennent n'importe quoi, du vin rouge, du champagne, de la bière. Parfois, ils perdent jusqu'à 2 et 3 minutes, alors il faut qu'ils chassent pendant 20 km pour revenir après. Mais ils ont une excuse, parce qu'ils transpirent tellement. On a calculé que dans une étape chaude du Tour de France, un coureur peut perdre jusqu'à 4 kilos, et à vrai dire, jusqu'à 4 litres de sueur. Alors il faut boire, il faut boire. Yeah. Until 1965, you could drink alcohol at the Tour de France. They would stop, get absolutely shit-faced and go on. <laughs> Don't you find, if you've had a drink, exercise is so much easier? Like, I can yeah. walk for miles in just, like, a minute. It's like carnival. Yeah, when I go carnival and I have a drink, oh, my gosh. I didn't know I could dance for so long. Yeah. yeah. I go down to the floor, up again, I'm like, I'm that girl. Yeah, obviously, mm. two days later, I'm, you... like, I'm, I'm like, girl doctor. <laughs> <laughs> can you slut drop? Yeah, of course I can. Oh, I thought it was just me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very good. I'll show um... you later. <laughs> Imagining you two have sex is one of the weirdest things I've ever heard. Well, stop it, then. Uh, I can't stop. I'm doing it right now. I feel like Jimmy doesn't have a penis. He has, like, a USB stick. <laughs> it looks like when you plug him in, he literally goes... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ding dong, ding dong. Yeah, yeah. And then he goes... <laughs> <laughs> It's just locker room bants, isn't it? Yeah. It's Here's locker room bants. OK. <laughs> I finally asked you what, what gifts did Billie Jean King and Bobby Briggs exchange at the Battle of the Sexes tennis match? Uh, we didn't realise they were mean gifts. We said nice ones. OK. Well, go on. What, what, what do you think they gave each other? We said Percy Pigs, and then you said... A Liberty Scarf. 
<laughs> you're just so nice. Just have a lovely scarf. Percy yeah. Pigs, I'll give you a point for. Roisin, Dane? Well, I thought, because they were mean gifts, and I thought about the mean... We talked about the mean gifts that we've been given, and I've been given Spanx as a present. <laughs> oh, you! <laughs> Awful! Awful! And wait to hear what Dane got. I uh, went on holiday with an ex, and I lost my sunglasses in the sea. And then her parents thought it'd be funny to buy me string for the sunglasses <laughs> that I lost. <laughs> oh, that's a bit mean. It is a bit mean, isn't yeah. it? But it's kind of fun as well. Yeah. It is kind of fun because I left her the month after. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Judy, Joel, what have you got? We went with we uh, went with tampon on and kitchen gloves because we thought they were really mean. He was mean being sexist. Yeah, she well, was sexist, being horrible. Political. Yeah, that'd be well, a horrible. Well, gift. she gave him uh, a piglet because she said he was a male chauvinist pig, and he gave her uh, a lollipop because he said she's going to be a sucker for my lob. Oh, look at that. Yeah. That's Austin Powers, isn't it? Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> That's what a sporting professional yeah. used to look like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, at the end of the first round, let's check in on the scores. Roisin, Dane, uh, Tom and Kerry, two points, two points. OK, uh, in the lead, Judy and Joel, that's how bad this quiz is. Oh, You've got three points. <laughs> it's time to take a break now. Remember, sports fans, sweat is just fat crying. See you in five. <laughs> to the big fat quiz of sport. Our next round is all about music in the world of sport. Elton John bought Watford Football Club in 1976. Although, to be fair to Elton, he was on a lot of drugs back then. <laughs> in 2018, Formula One driver Lewis Hamilton launched a secret music career. You'd think if anyone understood the meaning of stay in your lane, it'd be him. <laughs> <laughs> Time for some uh, music-related sports questions. All right, first one. Three Lions has become an anthem for England fans. Can you name three of the five England players named in the track? Do you remember when, like, people on TV used to have teeth like that in the 90s? Joel, we're not really an advert for natural teeth, you and I. <laughs> <laughs> it's, there's some bullshit going on here, and we know it. Oh, well, there's loads of sporty people here on the wall. We could get clues. Yeah, yeah. if you knew what their names were. <laughs> I don't know any of them. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Jules Glamain still dreaming? <laughs> Jules Remay, I believe, is the name of the trophy. Oh, right. <laughs> Joel, write down some more answers. Oh, I fucking hate this fucking, fucking show! <laughs> OK, question number two. What of Aerosmith's Stephen Tyler, the Black Eyed Peas' Fergie and Michael Bolton all got in sport in common? They've all got something in common to do with sports. Aerosmith's Stephen Tyler, the Black Eyed Peas, Fergie, and Michael Bolton. What do they all have in common? Mm. All right, question number three. Have a listen to this famous musician belting out a passionate Tottenham Hotspur fan chant. All I want to know is who's singing this. Glory, glory, Tottenham Hotspur. Glory, glory, Tottenham Hotspur. Glory, glory, Tottenham Hotspur. And the Spurs go marching on. Kerry Godleyman, end of question. That's not me. That is 100%. Uh, that is it's you. It's not me! I'm not you. Somebody that sounds just like you. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a woman from London. Question number four in this round on music. What musical sporting tradition originated with a Red Sox baseball team and has since been adopted by British darts, football and rugby league? OK, so what musical sporting tradition originated with the Red Sox baseball team and has since been adopted by British darts, football and rugby league fans? The clue is it's the music round. Uh, sorry. Socks is a big clue. Oh, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Question number five in this round. During the France 98 World Cup, the England football squad pranked the press. Tony Adams, Alan Shearer and Gareth Southgate and even manager Glenn Hoddle were all in on it. What did they do? I know this. Rasheen thinks she knows the answer. This could be the one question she gets right. <laughs> so shit. No, you're not! Feed me a crisp, Judy, will you? I'm having a break, girl. <laughs> Ready? We're open wide up. Mama's coming for you. Go on, go on! Ah! All right, here's the answers for this round. All right. I asked you for three of the five players that are mentioned in three lines. Let's go live to Joel Domit for the answer. I went with Nobby. Is no. Nobby one of them? Nobby, who else, what else have you gone for? Nobby, because Nobby's dancing. I went Gascoigne. 
and Ash barns. Cars and barns. I feel like they're in there somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Nobby, I'll give you one point for Nobby because Nobby Styles. Yes. Was dancing. Okay, uh, Kerry, uh, Tom, did you get this? We got Bobby Charlton. Yeah, you get a point for that. George Best. You what? Paid, oh, no. He's George Best. He's George... Irish, isn't he? I he's told Irish. you he's Irish. Well, I don't know, do I? What am I oh, supposed he's... to check everybody's passport? <laughs> <laughs> Who else did you get? Gary Lineker and Gaza. And Paul Gascoigne, Gaza. You I get two points, then. How did you not think... Like, Judy, Lineker. you're literally eating crisps. How did you not think of Lineker? Bad! <laughs> okay. oh, no, Roisin Dane, did you get this? You got this, right? Yeah. Uh, I th we put a lot of names. What did you put? Pretty much the starting eleven. No, we were... Uh, <laughs> Bobby Moore? Yeah, Bobby Moore's in there. Gaza. Gaza's... Um, Bobby Charlton. Bobby Charlton, yeah. And, uh, and Lineker. Lineker. Absolutely right. What, here's three lines. Oh, no, don't. I can't stand it. <laughs> Whenever you hear it, you know it's England that are going to fuck up in a world tournament. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what it evokes. Unless the women are playing. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Also, the jewels from was the one that was stolen, wasn't it? And no one's ever found it. No, they did find it. Oh. They did find it. Where was it? Where was it? Was it up your ass? A dog found it. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to do a bit of laddie banter there, and that's why I hate lads, because when I try and do laddie banter, everyone looks at me like I'm a weirdo. <laughs> no, and you said they did find it, and I went, was it up your ass? Now, if a bloke had said that, everyone would be, like, jumping up and down, <laughs> Do it again, do it again. Do it again, do it again. Do it again. Oh, was it up your ass? <laughs> This has gone badly. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So I asked you what Stephen Tyler from Aerosmith, Fergie from the Black Eyed Peas, and Michael Bolton all had in sport in common. What did you all put? They sang the national anthem, didn't they, in the middle of the Super Bowls? Well, yeah. What did you guys get, Dane? Rasheen? We said that they uh, fudged up the national anthem. So it wasn't that they just sung the Star Spangled Banner. They did very, very terrible renditions of it. Yes. Judy Joel? Uh, first of all, big dicks. <laughs> Just thought that'd be funny. You've proved that it isn't, so we also <laughs> put... <laughs> You've got to say it with confidence, Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then we... I put slash... <laughs> sang national anthem, because yeah. I thought I'd put a real answer. I can tell you, they've all been criticised for their I can tell you, they've all been criticised for their rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. This is from Fergie. <laughs> this is like the jazzy version. Oh, I can't it's wait. It's almost, I mean, it's so bad. Have a look. That's not the worst one. I think Michael Bottoms is significantly worse, right? So he forgets the lyrics. Half... He's singing it very oh, badly yes. anyway. <laughs> and then he forgets the lyrics. It. And it's, it couldn't be more obvious. And the speed with which the crowd boo is phenomenal. Oh, tell me you've got this. Someone singing our national anthem like that. <laughs> what is the national anthem? What's our British one? Wanted... What's sorry? What's the national anthem? How's it going? It's, 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 it's had a recent. It's had a recent remix. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> no, we've gone. We've gone so woke now. We've even got a male queen. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Uh, again. Uh, There was a lot of bouncing up and down, that's all I mean. <laughs> all right. You had a famous musician singing her support for Tottenham Hotspur. Who do you think it was? Well, we said Kerish Godliman. 
But that's really a <laughs> affectionate name for what we believe to be Adele. Oh, my God! Oh, Adele! Adele! Oh. What did you write, Tom? <laughs> Carrie, what did you put? Comments. We just said someone from EastEnders, so what we were then? the same. Yes. And what, what did you think, Judy? We, we basically said Adele. We said any white cockney woman. If you've got that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a look at her impassioned rendition to find out. Do you think you still remember the Hot Spurs chant? Oh, yes. Glory, glory, Tottenham Hotspur. Glory, glory, Tottenham Hotspur. Glory, glory, Tottenham Hotspur. And the Spurs go marching on. Oh, she wow. Does, she does remind me of the girls who used to bully me on the bus. <laughs> I asked you what sporting tradition originated with the Red Sox baseball team. What have you got? Sweet Caroline. Sweet Caroline. What, what have you got, Judy, Joel? We went national anthem because I was being really pressured under time from you, you thought, at that point. You thought they started the tradition of singing the national anthem? Yeah, I was panicking. Judy's really not helping. She keeps eating crisps. I just... <laughs> I panic. It's pronounced churis. It's churis. Um, churis. <laughs> churis. <laughs> Christine, Jane, did you get this? That's we did get it. We got, uh, oh. yeah, Sweet Caroline as well. Singing Sweet Caroline. So, apparently, they had a guy... Dr. Charles Steinberg joined the Red Sox in 2002 and decided the song Sweet Caroline had transformative powers for the crowd. Wow. So he started people doing this. All right. I asked you what prank the England 98 squad played on the press. What did you put? They tried to basically put song titles into all of their interviews. OK. Tom, Kerry? We went for a similar sort of angle, didn't we? Mm, we did, actually. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> we said putting rude words in interviews, e.g. Nipple. <laughs> These words in the juice. Okay, uh, Judy, Joel. Uh, I think you might remember at this point, Jimmy. This is the point where I was having a minor breakdown. Oh <laughs> ah, yes. Um, okay, so I wrote hula hoops, <laughs> just because you were pressuring me and saying, write something down, Joel. And so you wrote down hula hoops so I just because Judy was eating hula hoops. Yes. Other crisps are available. <laughs> you got it absolutely right, Rasheen Dane. They made a bet to sneak song titles into interviews. Let's take a look at the hilarious moment where the players skillfully dropped the brilliant lyrics in. Delighted to go off the mark, no doubt. Yeah, we're all excited. We weren't exactly uh, dancing on the ceiling, but we're keeping our feet on the ground. How are you looking forward to it all? Yeah, I'm so, I'm so excited. Yeah, we've had some magic moments this season, <laughs> and uh, it's just, you know, gets better and better. How are you doing? You look relaxed, but uh, is the tension building a little? I mean, it's hardly Club Tropicana, Bob. It's, uh, <laughs> it's You're not going to get any um, careless whispers from me, Bob. How are you doing? <laughs> there is a wager on this trip for the players that can actually get song titles onto the television. Is that accurate? It's just your imagination, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> you missed that one. <laughs> Are you still naming the tunes? No, it's all over now, guys. <laughs> that's and good. that's the last time Alan Shearer smiled. <laughs> now it's time for a special bonus round. Please welcome international rugby stars Will Joseph, Alex Cuthbert and Dylan Lewis. <laughs> Thanks very much for coming on, guys. I very much appreciate it. Um, you look mental. Uh, here's, here's the, so they're all wearing iconic outfits worn by sporting superstars. I just want you to write down which sportsman attire are they wearing. Oh. Uh, give, us, give us a 12 hour, Alex. Uh, I mean... Wow. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Nearly out uh, my eye out. <laughs> <laughs> We're writing down what sport they're... What sportsmen? They're dressed as iconic they're, sportsmen. A particular person? Mm -hmm. Yes, a particular person. I, I can't make this any easier. They, I mean, yeah. Oh, all the same person? <laughs> they... No. <laughs> How shit what, would you have to person? be a sports quiz yeah, to think, oh, it's so all the same person? people are really multi-talented. Yeah, exactly. They can do a bit of everything. <laughs> all um, aside, the... can I have your top? This one. The gold one. End, yeah. Right. yeah, it's lovely. I'll give it to you Thank after. You. And that's, that's, that's a contract, what we just did, is a verbal contract. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to ask for, Jude? I think I, I would like the helmet. The helmet? No, surely that should... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you look at the one on his head, or...? Yes! <laughs> All right, so have you all got three sporting stars written down? Roisin, Dane, what have you got? We uh, said Eddie the Eagle. Yeah, oh. Eddie the Eagle, Calgary 88. That, that, that is the right answer. That is what he's come as. I don't know who said Andre Agassi. 
I don't know why. We, we don't really know that many uh, rustic tennis players. Oh. Couldn't be any more wrong. Oh, we said that as well. But you get a point for Eddie the Eagle, that's right. That's not Andre Agassi. Who do you think that is? Uh, I, I wrote Will Carling, but it's not Will Carling, it's John McEnroe. Yeah. No. Oh. No? Oh. Is it Will Carling? That's got to be John McEnroe. Who have you come at? Uh, Rooney. Beyond Borg. Beyond, Beyond Borg. Borg. Beyond they're, look, his Borg, he looks absolutely yeah. bloody yeah. identical. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> they look, they're like <laughs> twins. <laughs> That's actually... I'm not even fucking around. That is Bjorn Borg. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only one who thought Bjorn Borg was in ABBA? <laughs> OK, your last one, Dane, is... Uh, uh, what, did you, what did you go with? We went with Tiger Woods. I mean... Uh, let me explain. <laughs> uh, you're going to have some explaining to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very tough one you get. Hello. Um, <laughs> we, um, we weren't sure where we carry. No. Uh, and then you had a thought. The village people. <laughs> The famous sporting village people, OK? <laughs> uh, Joel, Judy? <laughs> we put Tiger Woods as well. Um, all right, so who are you? You are... I'm Ian Poulter, the golfer, from 2008. Yeah, Ian Poulter wore that outfit. Have a look. He wore <laughs> that playing golf. Jimmy, someone's got to say it. There's a colour issue here. <laughs> Let me finish. This gentleman is wearing bronze. <laughs> this gentleman is wearing gold. <laughs> All right, let's have a quick check-in on what that's done to the scores. I can tell you, Judy and Joel are back where they belong in last place oh, with six what? points. Oh. Tom and Kerry have seven. In the lead, Roshin and Dane with nine points. Oh. Time for a quick break. Give it up for my glamorous assistants, Alex, Dylan and Will. See you in five. Back to the big fat quiz of sport. Our next round is all about the big sports stories that made headlines. Serena Williams won the 2017 Australian Open whilst pregnant. It's an incredible sporting achievement. To put it in tennis terms, she was previously unseeded, but when she won it, she was definitely seeded. <laughs> in 2022, the Lionesses won the Euros. It was the most wonderful tournament. People ask, what's the difference between men's and women's football? Well, the women actually win trophies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ready for some more questions? Of course, it wouldn't be the Big Fat Quiz without an appearance from the children of Mitchellbrook Primary School performing one of their unconventional school plays, Take a Look. We lost! I hate losing. Me too. Me three. I'm having a good hair day. Seriously? You were rubbish. Sorry, boss! You need to pay attention. Oh, I look sassy. <laughs> That was, of course, the infamous moment in 2003 when Sir Alex Ferguson kicked a football boot at David Beckham's head after a game. Uh, what I want to know is, what was the term given to Sir Alex Ferguson's famous dressing room rants? Oh, God. I mean, I thought the flipping art question was going to be, what was that? <laughs> Next one. In 2005, after winning the London Marathon, Paula Radcliffe made this statement. I want to apologise to the nation. I had to stop. I didn't really want to resort to that in front of hundreds of thousands of people. I started feeling it between 15 and 16 miles and probably carried on too long. I must have eaten too much beforehand. What was she apologising for? Perhaps the greatest moment in sporting history. It's, ama it's amazing. It's easily the greatest moment in sporting history. <laughs> for our next question, it's over to England rugby star Joe Marler. Hi, Jimmy. Throughout my rugby career, there has been much to celebrate. But back in 2005, one sporting team's wild celebrations caused quite a scene at 10 Downing Street. They were accused of weeing in the back garden, and one of them called Tony Blair a knob. <laughs> but what team was it, and what were they celebrating? OK, so what does that friendly wizard want to know? <laughs> when they booked you, did they tell you it was sports? <laughs> when they booked you, did they tell you it was sports? <laughs> <laughs> That's an unbelievable moment on a quiz. <laughs> In January 1995, Manchester United's Eric Cantona infamously kung fu kicked a rival fan. In a press conference after the incident, he came out with a now legendary quote, all I need you to do 
is fill in the blanks. Yes. When the what follow the what, it's because they think what will be thrown into the what. So what, 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 what? So, Jimmy, I've got one question. What? <laughs> it's from the... <laughs> <laughs> Judy, what are you eating now? The hoops, baby. It fits right round your little face. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, wait! Woo! <laughs> okay, last question in this round. In 1995, Michael Jordan announced he was coming out of retirement and returning to the NBA. He sent a press statement that was described as the most famous facts in sports history. What did it say? Da 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 da! <laughs> right, are you ready for answers? Of course you yes, are. We yes, are. yes, we are. We asked you what was the term given to Sir Alex Ferguson's famous dressing room rants? Chris, what have you put? Mucky words. Oh, well, we had to, uh, yeah. We thought it was what mucky words, because we know it's Scottish and that's kind of how they sound to us. <laughs> but then I was thinking it was like the hairdryer rants. Hairdryer treatment. Like a hairdryer treatment. But... Mucky rants. Ooh! Mucky rants. There you go. Fucking great. Out of nowhere, he starts doing his acting. Mm. <laughs> After all these years, you've just been waiting for the right role to come yeah. up. That's it, yeah, an angry Scottish man. <laughs> mucky rants. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's good. good. Yeah. I don't know what to do with that, to be honest. I didn't think you had any talent. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of your comedy. Uh, Tom, Kerry, what have you got? Blowjobs. <laughs> I mean, Every it's a hairdryer well. treatment, but blowjobs is very close. What question are we on? <laughs> question one, Judy. <laughs> Right. We Mac went with McRant. McRant. We knew it was right, but I didn't know what the answer was specifically. Uh, well, OK, so uh, Roisin and Dane get the point for a uh, hairdryer treatment. Uh, next, so Paula Radcliffe, she won the London Marathon. Incredible athlete, one of the greats. She apologised afterwards. Uh, I read the statement. Oh, my what Lord. did you think happened? She, she, she pooped on the street. She ran a 2.17 marathon, which is insane. She won it and... During the race, she pooped in the street. That's how amazing she is. So is where she way? pooed, was there tissue? No, she just she just squatted down, grew a tail, and then marched on. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> no way, no way. No, I feel bad for her because that's what everyone remembers her for. But it's she's terrible, genuinely isn't it? one of the best athletes, uh, athletes that she we've did ever an amazing had. I tell you what's terrible is the person who's gone. Oh, this would make a great snap. Oh no! Click. <laughs> I pooed myself while running. Have you? you? Yeah, I, got, oh. I did the marathon, what? and I did. I've done lots of marathons before, and I. Um... That's not what we asked, actually, Joe. But well done That's for crowbarring that in. <laughs> you led in with the "I shit myself." So shit myself. tell us about that, not the marathon. Because you take a lot of these energy gels, and you just it just ha happens really quick, and it just went down my leg. And luckily, it was kind of raining, so I kind of got through. So it's a common hazard. People. They're Don't always shitting themselves. Yeah. It's not good for your sport. Well, did everyone get this? Everyone yeah. got this, right? Yeah, great. One of, the, one of the key sporting moments. All right, Joe Marla asked you uh, who caused a scene at Downing Street in 2005 and what were they celebrating? Did you know this? I think it was the cricket team. Yes. Uh, yeah, and celebrating... Uh, we said they won the Ashes. And the 100% right. 100% oh, wow. right. Sorry, we what? said that too. We said Ashes. You said Ashes. We really said... drink off Ashes cricket. Uh, Judy, Joel, what did you put? Uh, you read out the question, but Judy was talking to me. I just put football and I thought that'll be fine. <laughs> it was the England cricket team celebrating the Ashes win at Downing Street. Ha have a look. We've got some stills. OK, so that's... Wow. Look, look how loaded Freddie Flintoff I mean. looks there. That's him. <laughs> that's Freddie when he was in train spotting. Yeah. <laughs> and then there he is. Oh, my oh, God. Wow. That's on the way to Downing Street. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, OK. I asked you to fill in the blanks of Eric Cantona's iconic 1995 statement. I said what way too many times. Did you get this? Oh, yes. OK, what have you got? Seagull, trawler, fish, sea. Sea. Oh. oh. So close, but no. Oh, what? Come on. You got three, three out of the four, but you need all four. OK, so... Oh. You got seagull, trawler, sea. Uh, what did you get, Tom, Gary? We said when the parakeets follow the sun... <laughs> It's because they think crisps will be thrown into the air. <laughs> Roisin, Dane, uh, what did you put? We got uh, gulls follow the trawler because they think sardines will be thrown into the sea. Uh, no. That's the right answer. I'm so annoyed. Yeah. That's the right answer, yeah. This is when footballers were cool. When the seagulls follow the trawler, it's because they think 
sardines will be thrown into the sea. Thank you. It was so good. It was, of course, briefly an oasis. Does anyone know what it means? Yeah, it's when he kicked that guy in the face, wasn't it? I think he was like saying the press. The press are kind of onto him. They're following him round. He was just having a go at the press. It's oh, so I see. I asked you what Michael Jordan said in his iconic facts. So this is when he was announcing he was coming out of retirement. Well, what do you think he said? I'm back. He I'm, was, back. I'm back. Uh, I'm back. Tom bounce. Kerry, what do you think he faxed the press? I'm back. Yeah. Okay. Faxed it. Judy, That's John. That's what we said. I'm back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm back. The same thing. It's basically right. <laughs> yeah. I'm coming back. Uh, let's take a look at the incredibly brief and simplistic statement from the uh, greatest of all time, Michael Jordan. Oh, oh. All, all blurb at the top. I'm back. <laughs> yes, you got it right. Yes. No, well, no, Judy, you That's... didn't. <laughs> no, because you put I'm coming back. Oh, it's, no. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's the same thing. Same thing. We can we, that. Is it the same thing, though? It's the same. Because it's a very famous fax, famous for being brief to the point. <laughs> and it's the noise of fax when you accidentally rang a fax. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like Jimmy Carver, he's having sex. <laughs> It's now time for a very special bonus round. I'm going to show you three iconic sporting moments which have all been subtly improved. All you need to do is tell me who is in the sporting photos. So here's the first one. <laughs> oh, my God. OK, so who am I there? OK, you've got to write it down. Here's the second. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's, um, that's... And um... the third one? Damn. Those three, right? Oh, good. So many people would like to see that. Oh, you look good with a beard. <laughs> Thank you. OK, so the first one, what have you all got? Torval and Dean. OK, Torval and Dean, Torval and Dean. Let's have a look. Here they are. Oh, wow. Look at that. He looks like he might have just shot himself. <laughs> Next one, OK, so uh, who's that? Ben Johnson. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's not seeing colour and not seeing colour. Ed <laughs> Roger oh, Bannister. Oh, yes. Oh, that's him. No, no I put Roy Bannister. Oh, I'll give you that Roger for Bannister. Bannister. Thank got, you, got Bannister Thank as well. You. We got Bannister as well. OK, so, yeah, Roger Bannister breaking the sub four-minute oh, mile oh, in 1954. Oh, and the last one, who's that? Conor McGregor. <laughs> yes, I knew it. Well done, Tom. Yeah, so it was Conor McGregor getting punched in the face by Floyd Mayweather. Build us the money fight. People don't realise that I actually box. Where do you do boxing? Uh, outside my house. Well, you boxed too long. Then. No, it's outside Wait, my house. house. Oh, 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 I'm making it sound like you're just knocking people down. I, I, I think they make like too much noise outside my house. So I punch <laughs> the lights out. <laughs> it's a good sport, Jimmy. You'd love it if you hadn't paid so much for that face. You'd love it. <laughs> Again, new bits. This is all replaceable. <laughs> yeah, I've got spares. Have you really had work done then? Oh. God. <laughs> I've looked the same for 15 years, yeah. No, I just thought people was being haters and just saying that because you've got smooth, milky skin. <laughs> it is milky. <laughs> OK, all right, so uh, what's that done to the scores? Uh, Judy Joel, there's no nice way to break this to you. You're still in last place, wow. but not by that much. So Judy and Joel have got 10, <laughs> Tom and Kerry have got 12, Ooh. Rasheen and Dane have 17 out in the Damn. lead. Yeah. <laughs> for a break now. Everyone else saw that, right? Yeah, someone out of the Naked Attraction holding pen. Go out. See you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of Sport. Our next round is all about people. Michael Jordan is one of the greatest athletes of all time for Americans. For most British people, he's just a very tall man that plays netball. <laughs> people say that Michael Jordan had the most accurate shot in American history. Well, tell that to JFK. <laughs> oh my God. It's so good. Tiger Woods is considered by some as the all-time greatest golfer and by everyone as the all-time worst husband. <laughs> <laughs> right, time for some more questions. For our first question, it's over to the legend Dame Kelly Holmes. Hi, Jimmy. When I was competing, I focused on getting quicker and quicker. But at the Sydney 2000 Olympics, Eric Moussambani swam the 100 metres freestyle in the slowest time ever, but still won his heat. He made headlines everywhere and was given a loving nickname. Can your teams tell me what it was? What's his first name? Uh, it's Eric. Slow Eric. <laughs> uh, it's not bad. Oh, no, you'd go for the joke. You'd go fast Eric. <laughs> He's in incredible shape. 
Whoa. He doesn't look like he likes swimming. <laughs> like that, I know that face, because that was the first day I made at swimming lessons. <laughs> Isn't <What>? it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's American ring announcer Michael Buffer, footballer Jamie Vardy, and fitness legend Jane Fonda. They're all associated with iconic sporting phrases. I just want to know what phrase is associated with each one of them. I know his. Yeah. Question three. Boxers Vitaly Klitschko and Manny Pacquiao, uh, as well as footballer George Weah, have all got something in common. What is it? Uh, Two incredible boxers, one incredible footballer. Are they all Aries, Jimmy? Are they all Aries? Yeah. <laughs> no. Can't believe you don't know when Vitaly's <laughs> birthday is. <laughs> OK. Matiza Merzad is the star player in the Iranian seated volleyball team. I want to know what natural advantage does he have at the Paralympics? So he plays seated volleyball. Uh, they've dominated the sport around for the last decade. It's guessable. Mm. Long arms. All right. For the last question in this round, we go across to the esteemed actor Charles Dance. He's reading an extract from a sports star's autobiography. All I want to know is who's that sports star? Have a listen. Chapter 12. Slim dumps a small pile of white powder on the coffee table. He cuts it, snorts it. He cuts it again. I snort some. I've never felt such energy. I'm seized by an urge, a desperate desire to clean. I go tearing around my house, cleaning it from top to bottom. I dust the furniture. I scour the tub. I make the beds. I sweep the floors. When there's nothing left to clean, I do laundry, all the laundry. I fold every sweater and every T-shirt and still haven't made a dent in my energy. I don't want to sit down. If I had table silver, I'd polish it. If I had leather shoes, I'd shine them. If I had a giant jug of coins, I'd roll them into paper wrappers. I look high and low for Slim. He's out in the garage taking apart the engine of the car and putting it back together. I tell him I could do anything right now. Anything, man, anything, anything, any fucking thing. I could get in the car and drive to Palm Springs and play 18 holes, then drive home and make lunch and go for a swim. I don't sleep for two days. When I finally do, it's the sleep of the dead and the innocent. That was, that was a bit intense, wasn't That's it? That's a lot, isn't it? So that is a sporting star's autobiography. Wow. But what we know from that is they did a <laughs> ton of drugs. Was anybody else just thinking about how clean his house must be as well? <laughs> like, oh, I'd love to see that pile of ironing. <laughs> All right, I've got some answers for you, everyone. All right, here we go. Dame Kelly Holmes wanted to know what nickname was given to Eric Mosambani winning the 100-metre heat in the slowest time. Uh, Dane. Eric the Eel. That is the right answer. Oh, oh. Deal. There he is. Yeah. You put Splashy Steve. Splashy Steve, you think? Splashy yeah. Steve. That sounds like someone we would know and we'd talk about on WhatsApp. <laughs> you won't believe what Splashy Steve did. Shut up. He was in the wrong lane at the municipal swimming pool again. <laughs> I was swimming recently and a very old um, West Indian lady was behind me swimming and then I sort of got out of her way and I was sorry and then she said to me, um, oh, don't worry, we all start somewhere. <laughs> She was definitely probably like nearly 80 years old, and I just moved. I was like, oh, sorry, like you're obviously one I'm in your way. What she meant was move your ass or the <laughs> wheel. Okay, Eric the Eel only learned to swim eight months before the competition. <laughs> he learned to swim eight months before wow. the Olympics. Wow. And the wow. other two swimmers in his heat were disqualified for false starts, so he just had to do it on his own. But no one else in the pool. So slow, like the <laughs> slowest time by like a factor of three. <laughs> okay, I asked you for iconic sporting uh, phrases from uh, Michael Buffer, Jamie Vardy, and Jane Fonda. What did you all get? So Michael Buffer, he's the <laughs> ring announcer. What did you got? Uh, that's, that's what, what it was. Came oh, we thought it was Buble. <laughs> so what did you put? <laughs> well, we put um, driving home for Christmas. <laughs> well, that's Chris Rea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, OK, so what did you put? What did you get? Where what did you... we put, Dave? We put the uh, famous phrase, let's get ready to rumble! Oh, my God! Oh, it's PJ and Duncan! <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he copyrighted Let's Get Ready to Rumble. He's made $400 million from Let's Get Ready to Rumble. Oh, I wow. need to put this uh, He's copyrighted the, the phrase, so every time someone uses it, he gets paid. We've got to start copywriting our lines. I'm just going to... I'm just going to copyright bitches! <laughs> <laughs> the next one was uh, Jane Fonda. So Jane Fonda had two iconic phrases. What do you think they were? Feel the burn. Feel the burn. That's one, yeah. The Ooh, other one? Stop the war in Vietnam? 
You pick, <laughs> she no, did say that a lot. We've got it. Let's get physical. <laughs> Let's get physical was not her. Oh, no, that oh. was Sandy from Greece. So that was Sandy Olivia from Greece, Olivia Newton-John. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. I mean, Sandy how ungay is this Let's program? Let's get physical. <laughs> OK, so what, what did you put? We've got the right we, one. We've got Phil the Burn. Feel the um, burn, yeah. Yeah. You could have also had no pain, no gain. Oh. oh. Uh, Jamie Vardy's was chat, chat shit, shit get, get banged. banged. Chat shit get banged. Yeah, that's his, <laughs> that, that's his contribution it. to sport. What did you put? Well, we put. Um, I'm gonna nut you. <laughs> Well, we got two, right? We got Let's Get Ready to Rumble and we got Chat Shit Get Banged. Where's Chat Shit Get Banged? Yeah, I just want to let... I've got, I'm, in all honesty, what's happened is that I wrote... It says chat. Jimmy is coming over like a surveyor. Chat, <laughs> see how you here, love. AT. Let's get ready to rumble, I can see you. Can you see it like Paul No, look, the get, like the, the get in. <laughs> <laughs> just curling one out. Uh, no, you get one point there. Yeah, I mean, that's some bullshit. <laughs> So I asked you what Weir, Pacquiao and Klitschko all have in common. What did you put? I said they all campaigned to be president, but I think... Cos I think Manny Pacquiao tried to be president of the, as the Philippines. George Weir was president of Liberia. Yeah. But... And I don't know if Klitschko tried to, for Ukraine. He went back to... into politics, cos he actually went back to help yeah, out. Yeah, so Klitschko is mayor of Kyiv. OK. George Weir is president of Liberia, and Manny Pacquiao is a senator in the Philippines and launched a presidential campaign in 2022. Wow. wow. So that's a point. We've got a point. I, I think I'll think we'll give you a point there, yeah. Thank you. OK, Tom, what did you put for this? All have a nut allergy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Judy, Joel? We put uh, all became we politicians. politicians. Oh. oh, that's the right answer. Points, points, no points. <laughs> OK. I asked you what gives uh, Mortez uh, Merzad a natural advantage at the uh, seated volleyball at the Paralympics. What did you put? Long arms. He's got very long arms, but it's kind of more than that. Joel, Judy, what have you got? Well, we said he was the tallest one in the group. That's the answer. He was the tallest. Yes! <laughs> He's the second tallest guy in the world. Wow! wow. I think I'm, I'm going to give you a point for long arms. What did you put for this? We'd have said long arms. Long arms. You get a point for that. You yeah, get a point for long arms. OK. Uh, Charles Dance read an extraordinary extract from a brilliant book. It's an autobiography of a sporting legend. Kerry, what did you think? Jimmy White. <laughs> I mean, Jimmy White famously did partake in recreational drugs. And cleaning. And cleaning. I don't know whether he ever drove Jimmy to Palm White. Springs. <laughs> oh, there was clues. <laughs> uh, Judy, Joel, did you get this? We don't know. We put, yeah, we, we put bought Andre... Andre Agassi we went with. Yeah. Andre Agassi, what did you go with, uh, Rasheen Dane? We said um, Mike Tyson. Oh! I don't think Mike Tyson ever got to that stage of drug abuse. Andre Agassi did. That's the correct answer. Oh! Proper, proper, like, teammates on this one, right? <laughs> oh, man, it was beautiful. Oh, if only that oh. was happening in round one. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's now time for a special bonus round. This is the part of the show where I introduce a special mystery guest. All you need to do is tell me who they are and why they're famous. However, you can only ask them yes or no questions. Oh. Please welcome our mystery guest. <laughs> wow. Very nice to meet you. Thank you so much for being here today. So they can ask you questions, just yes or no questions, and then you have to tell me who she is and why she's a sporting icon. Who are you? <laughs> it's a yes or no question. Are you a sailor? No. Is your sport an Olympic sport? Yes. Was you doing your sport in about the 80s? Yes. Are you called Sarah? No. <laughs> How would that help? Why not? Everyone's called Sarah. <laughs> Was you uh, in a picture? What? Yes. In a picture? That's the worst... That is a... Oh, worst question. No, no, no honestly, no, I gorgeous. know the answer. That's a magnificent question. Is your sport tennis? Yes. Oh, my God! Write it down! Write it down! Write it down! Oh, it's amazing! Write it down! Write it down! Quick! Oh, my God! I've never seen people more excited. I'm so excited! Yeah, I'm so excited, too. OK, now you, you're just going to have to write something down. Dane, Rasheen, write you, something. Can I ask... Ru yeah, you can ask one more question. Go on. Are you called Billy? No. <laughs> <laughs> Your questions are so bad. <laughs> so, let's see what everyone's got. Let's see what Rasheen and Dane have. Uh, so, we went with Billie Jean King and then we found out her name wasn't Billy. <laughs> OK, Tom, <laughs> Kerry, who do you think this is? I 
think you're the iconic tennis player from the 80s Athena post where you're scratching your bum? <gasps> yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, oh my God, amazing. Well yeah. I know it's very unprofessional, but I brought along my copy. That, that, is, <laughs> that is unbelievable. That is, that is you back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how did this happen? Um, my boyfriend was a photographer and he was taking some sporting photographs and uh, that was the, the tennis one. Were you doing, were you scratching your arse and he just caught it or did he go, no, scratch no, your arse? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was what we decided to do. Wow. How, how does it yeah. feel when you, look at, when you look at that picture now? What does it feel like? When Arousing. You oh, sorry, you're asking her. <laughs> Wow. So gorgeous, anyway. It's so yeah. beautiful. But looking at that, well, I, I do like it. Yeah. It's no. stunning. Where, do you have it up in your house? I do. I have it hanging up in the downstairs loo. <laughs> <laughs> Roshin is desperate to know your name. I need to know your name. Fiona. Fiona. <laughs> Can you sign that for me? Not... Fiona, was she a model then? Did you do modelling? Was she a model? No, yeah. no, I wasn't. Jimmy, your voice has gone awfully high. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't get starstruck often, but that Jimmy, is, do you that's an that 80s icon. That, that, that is such a beautiful a picture. Thank you so much for coming on. I really do appreciate nice it. Thank you. It's so lovely to meet you. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you so much. I know we were so genuinely. We were so excited in the office when we when we like tracked you down. Mm. It's like it's such a kind it's of. It's weirdly, it feels like such a lovely yeah. thing. <laughs> and do you know what, Fiona? It. As you walk away, we're all going to go like this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's see what that's done to the score. Tom and Kerry are in last place with 15 points. One ahead, Judy and Joel with 16. In the lead by some margin with 23, Roisin and Dane. Okay, give it up one more time for Fiona. We'll see you after the break. Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of Sport. This next round is all about science and technology in the sporting world. Esports was a pilot event at the 2022 Commonwealth Games, and esports is actually better than regular sports, because in the middle of an intense contest, your mum can bring up tea on a tray. <laughs> Since 2016, the introduction of video assistant referees, VAR or VAR, has meant more correct decisions in football. And as well as VAR, there's also a thing where when a decision correctly goes against you, but you can't accept it, and you go to court and lose millions of pounds, <laughs> and that's a VAR D. <laughs> okay. okay, time for some science and technology sporting questions. All right. In 1818, William Cubitt invented the first treadmill, but it wasn't for fitness. What was the original purpose? Um, Jimmy, I've got a bit of a cramp in my, my pen finger because I've been doing quite a lot of the answers. Right. But I've brought someone along that can help with that. You're like, bringing on a sub? Yeah, but can I bring on a sub, please? Yeah, sure. <laughs> bring on a sub. Yeah. Oh, Thank you very much. Of oh, 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 We're gonna win now! Yeah. Yeah. Sean Wallace down. off of the chase. Yeah. Not as not as fair as it could be, is it? <laughs> He's my masseuse. <laughs> Well, do you know what, though? It is fitting for professional sports because there's a lot of cheating that goes on. <laughs> and we want to respect all elements of the game. OK, so, second question. It's over to astronaut Tim Peake. Hi, Jimmy. During my time on the International Space Station, I had to do all sorts of exercises to stay fit. I even ran the London Marathon whilst in space. But there have only been three sports played on the surface of the moon. What are they? Ooh. Yeah, just with, he said, yeah. Don't, don't let him do it. Just tell, tell him. He's so <laughs> All right, so Tim Peake, three sports played on the moon. One of them's easy, two of them are impossible. <laughs> okay, Joel, Judy, write something down. I can't think of right, so, oh, I think it's something about being on our team, so, just makes you shit. So, <laughs> Portuguese footballing a superstar, Ronaldo, back in 2014, did an advert on Japanese television, I'm sure you all remember it, where he showcased an unusual fitness product. You all have one under your desks. All I want to know is, what is it? So you've all got one of these. It's a, a, a sporting fitness product. What is that used for? Is it to put it in your mouth? You have to tell me what it is. That's the... That's I'm the... asking you a question to narrow it down. I mean, yeah, sure. Well, that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like to know if I put something in my mouth, I get a firm yes. <laughs> <laughs> This feels like a trap. <laughs> this feels like... Do I put it in my mouth? And then, and then you get I want to know. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we think you put it up your bum and then it speeds you up in the swimming pool. <laughs> it does make sense. I'm so glad I put it in my mouth. <laughs> OK, here we go. Next one. 
Back in 2016, snooker legend Ronnie O'Sullivan tried out a virtual reality version of snooker. All I want to know is what went wrong. Oh, no. So, in 2016, Ronnie O'Sullivan tried out a virtual reality version of snooker. All I want to know is what went wrong. OK, I asked you what purpose the treadmill was originally created for. What did you get? Sushi bar. Oh, no. <laughs> You get 1881, that is sushi bar <laughs> with a treadmill. Yeah. OK, uh, and what, what, what have you gone for, Rasheen Dane? We, we said it's like, it was like a punishment for, like, prisoners. Like, it's like you're having to run eternally or something like that. That is the right answer. There it is. Wow. That. Wow, that That's photograph so is so good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Judy, Joel, more importantly, Sean, did you get it? Yeah, prison. We got it. Prison. Yeah. Prison. Did you know that, Sean? Uh, I didn't actually know. I got that one. <laughs> All right, so, so points, points, no points. Uh, Tim Peake asked you what three sports have been played on the moon. What did you get? We said golf. Most boring, privileged sport. Also, there's all those holes on the moon. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's lovely. lovely. Yeah. You'd be lovely. crazy not to. And then, and then we, and then we said uh, maybe tennis. Go golf is right. OK, OK. okay. Yeah. Tom, Kerry? We said golf. We got golf. We said patang. <laughs> A tang would be nice on that surface, wouldn't it? Boom. The, the, the yeah. French bull. Lovely little French bull game. Oh, game of patang. Yes, Lovely please. little French lager. <laughs> and um, we also said dressage. <laughs> OK, uh, Judy, Joel. We said. More importantly, Sean. Golf. Yeah, <laughs> golf is right. And then we said, like, American football kind of thing. And then you said. And then we said long jump. Oh, oh that's a good one. one. That's good. Oh, oh but it's wrong. Oh, ah. I can tell you the three sports that have been played on the moon are golf. Everyone got golf. Yes. High jump, which sounds uh, dangerous. Well, you said long jump. Yeah, but that's what I mean. The one where they have to Jumping. jump in the yeah, yeah. Technic. You've got to give me the jump. So you one. think long jump. jump is the same as high jump? <laughs> well, no, it's, it's the jumping, same. It's jumping, isn't it? It's like, jumping. Jump, high jumping. Jumping is not a sport. Yeah, we're jumping. If you don't put the flip. prefix of high or long or triple before it. <laughs> I have, have a point. And the last one, <laughs> you said American football, it was javelin. I don't know who bought a fucking javelin up there for some reason. <laughs> OK, I asked you what, what this device is. What's that used for? So, Has anyone written down anything that's even vaguely broadcastable? I said, well, we said mouth weight. Mouth weight, I'll give you a point for. Oh, nice. I'll no, take that. Doesn't it, doesn't it like do something to do with like to take your jaw? And what have you written down? We've got it, your face, jaw, and mouth exercise machine. Point. Yes! And what did you guys get? Gum shield. You think it's a gum shield? Yeah. No. Or? Or a propeller. Put it up your bum, use it as a propeller. <laughs> like that. Well, it turns out the masturbation video is the second most embarrassing thing on the internet. <laughs> I really loved your commitment to that. Yeah. What does your face? Does it feel like it's helping? It feels great. My, my cheeks feel real good. Then you can put it in your bum and it does your cheeks down there as well. Yeah. <laughs> well let's take a look at the advert. Here's the advert. Mm. Him, but not enough to put it in his mouth. <laughs> but what is it supposed to do? It's meant to work the muscles what? of your face somehow. Mm. So then what, what happens then? Does doing, someone Jimmy? see you and smile at you mm -hmm. and then you smile back and they go, holy shit, you've been working out. Yeah. <laughs> what it is, is this bit has got the weights and you're not really like, when you're doing it, it's, mo it's full of shit. <laughs> <I'm gonna> be... <laughs> OK, so so far on this round, we've allowed Sean Wallace off of the chase to be on your team, but I think it's getting slightly unfair what? now. We have to send you off uh, now. Your round of applause. Sean Wallace, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I asked you what went wrong when Ronnie O'Sullivan tried out VR snooker. What have you got? He lost a game and hurt someone. <laughs> OK, great, wrong. Uh, Tom, Kerry. We said, did, did he miss and get, get a cue up his bum? <laughs> He did not get a cue up his bum. Did he no. tear the carpet, like, tear cloth, like, when they go through the table? Uh, no. What, what did you guys go for? It said the AI predicted the winner before the game was finished. OK. Uh, well, let's have a look. My shot. Yeah, yeah, your shot, yeah. What are you going for, the six? <laughs> oh, oh, <Jesus. laughs> wow. Cute, did we get a... No, 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 she's so real. You feel like oh. there's a table there. That is Did you try and lean on a table? Yeah. Scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that is so funny. <laughs> OK, it's time for a Say What You See Now. All I want to know is what science-related sporting headline are these images representing? Oh, 
now. It's a sporting headline. Yeah. I got it! I haven't. <laughs> What's that second building? Is that a pub or a hotel? It's satisfying when you get it. OK, all right. No, well, let's, 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 you've had enough time on this. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. OK. Roisin, Dane, what did you get? Muhammad Ali. Yes. Moham. Yeah, so Moham, Ed, Ed, Ed R. Lee. Lee. Great. And then... and then we've got a bit with Sue. Her. Her. <clears throat> or oh. Sue Barker catfight. <laughs> yeah. uh, Kerry, Tom, what did you get? We put Muhammad Ali goes to space with Sue Barker. <laughs> <laughs> got it now. Go on, what do you think it is? I think well, it's Muhammad Ali stars in PC Super Fight. You're so close. It's Muhammad Ali stars in Computer Super Fight. Oh. I said computer. Judy so maybe changed it to PC. PC. Sorry. <laughs> OK, so it was Muhammad Ali and Rocky Marciano were heavyweight champions in different eras, so they filmed them fighting in different scenarios, <laughs> and a computer made a movie out of it, and Rocky Marciano won in America, Muhammad Ali won in Europe. Yeah. So, at the end of that round, the scores are, in last place, Tom and Kerry have 16. No, Judy I and Joel are second with 19. <laughs> way out in the lead. Uh, Roisin and Dane with 26 points. VAR. Yeah. Yeah. Time. <laughs> time for a break now. As they say in beach volleyball, you can stop masturbating for two minutes and go and rehydrate. Welcome back to the Big Fat Quiz of Sport. This next round is all about film and TV with a sporting twist. Vinnie Jones made a switch from football to acting after playing for Wimbledon's crazy gang. Wimbledon were famously brutal. They once beat Chelsea after losing to them at football. <laughs> In one of the most iconic movie scenes, Rocky runs up the stairs at the Philadelphia Art Museum. And to this day, it's the closest Sylvester Stallone's ever got to going into a museum. <laughs> During the filming of Rocky, the fighting was so brutal on set that Stallone had to be admitted to hospital. But it turned out it wasn't a head injury. That's just how he talks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time for some sporting questions based on film and TV. All right. First up, we're going to play you three music tracks from sporting films. All you have to do is name the film. And I'm going to be quite pernickety about the exact film. The last one's very easy, but you have to have the exact film. Here's the first one. I mean, extraordinary. What film is that from? All right, here's the second one. Oh, show me heaven, me. Carrie, please don't sing. Please don't show sing. Me heaven. Oh my God, it's Adele. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know that. It's... What film is it from? What sporting film? And this is the one I'm going to be pernickety about. Which film is this from? Film. Is it a sporting film? Yeah! Yes. It's a sports quiz, love. OK. <laughs> Question number two. In 2015, Match of the Day host Gary Lineker made a promise to the nation that he would do something unusual on the BBC should Leicester City win the Premier League. The odds of them winning were 5,000 to 1. What did he promise? To wear shoes made of cheese. <laughs> no, it was not to wear shoes made of cheese. Question number three in this round. Take a look at this nationwide report of Len Smith preparing to defend his title for the 1973 World Championship. All I want to know is, what sport was he champion of? Len Smith is a world champion, and like any international sportsman, he's dedicated to training. Right now, Len's got something on his mind. An important event will soon take place. He's preparing for another championship final. Laboratories have helped Len to hold a world championship longer than any other man alive. Okay, what, what sport is he world champion of? Shitting himself. <laughs> All right, question number four in this round. In 2018, boxer Derek Chisora left Dillian White perplexed with a bizarre fighting analogy in a televised pre-match interview that went viral. Derek said he'd go through White like what? I know Derek Chisora said he would go through white like what? 
I feel the whole quiz has been building up to the next question. I feel like this is peak us. This really sums up where we're at in terms Who's of Has it got a bum in it? Oh, yeah. Great. Is it scatological? Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is it a very bad thing? Great. WWE wrestler Rikishi burst onto the screens in the 90s and became a fan favourite with his unique and rather disturbing signature move. All I want to know is what's this called? Take a look. Oh, no! Look at Rikishi! Look at the rock! Rock oh, called him Mr McMahon! I think Rikishi's going to bang it Give him time! Give him time! No, don't! No! He's a billionaire! He owns his company! Yeah! Oh, Lucifer's lips! Uh, what's the question? I mean, do we need a question for that? <laughs> the, what is the name of that um, that signature move? What okay. is the name of that signature move? I feel like the, the Rock has come a long way since he was shoving people's, people's faces in us. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ready for some answers? Okay, I asked you about three songs. So, what film was this song from? Oh. Okay. What have you got? My sex <laughs> Are you saying your sex tape? My sex tape. <laughs> yeah, OK, that is from Ro Roisin's sex tape. And it was also in... We the Karate Kid. It was also in The Karate Kid, yeah. Uh, Tom, Curry? We thought it might be one of the Rockies, but not the original ones. We said Rocky V. Yeah. Do you think that was Rocky V? OK, no. Yeah. Um, no. Mm. Is there a Rocky V? Yes. There is, it's actually. Yeah. There. It was like, Rocky V is more of a sort of rockery. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see Rocky the Rockery. Oh, that's so cool. We're just doing some yes. gardening. <laughs> what did you put? Oh, we put Rocky as well. We it didn't was very know. wrong. It was very wrong. We just keep it moving. Of course, uh, The Karate Kid. And that was uh, You're the Best by Joe Esposito. OK, I played you this. This one really gets me, man. Who is it? Get this, Jane. Did you get this? We we said it's uh, the Tom Cruise film Days of Thunder. Days of Thunder. Was Tom Cruise. Uh, and we know you're getting it afterwards. Thunderdome. Thunder you put Thunderdome. Yeah, but we got very the word different Thunder. film. Thunder. What's Thunderdome? Thunderdome is the is the third Mad Max movie. Uh, you get the points. Rashina Jane get the points. Joel, what did you put? We put Top, Top Gun, Gun, but it's Tom. So you know, it's kind of like. Top Gun. No, because well, it's Tom Cruise. It's, it's, we knew it had Tom Cruise. Yeah. The song from Top Gun is Take My Breath no. Away. Oh, shit. Mm. These are cars. cars. Oh, yeah. Clue is it's a sports quiz. Most of our evening has been Judy saying, I got this wrong, but I think I should have a point. That's <laughs> most of what this show is. I'm sure driving them planes on Top Gun is like a sport. You know what she said, Jimmy? She said driving those planes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, well, they need to be driven for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> this, this one, I played you this. Oh, wow. Tom, stop it. <laughs> You've really been training. OK, which movie do you think this is from? We Rocky. I will not accept that. Rocky what one. did you put? Rocky, Rocky one. one! Rocky one! Rocky one, OK. Judy, Joel? We said Rocky. one Rocky. What, OK, Rocky what one? did you put? It's Rocky three. That is the correct answer. Oh, yeah. Give us our we points and let's leave! <laughs> Rocky Three, because I remember that Clubber Lang is played by Mr. T and Apollo Creed trains Rocky and says, Need to eye the tiger, brother. And then he dies in part four. <laughs> That's a spoiler. <laughs> okay, I asked you what Gary Lineker promised to do on BBC if Leicester won the 2015-16 Premier League. What do you all think? He'd do it in his pants. Wear it in his pants, just do it in his pants. What Machine you, said his fucking job for once. <laughs> I did. <didn't... laughs> You're so hard. I She's said really he'd hard. get a perm. He'd maybe, a perm. And then maybe a perm. And then we said maybe uh, he'd naked. present naked. <laughs> no, no points for that. Pants, pants. Let's pants. take a look. There he is. Yeah, a man of his Whoa. word. Presented in his pants. And he looks like he's had a perm. <laughs> I showed you a report of world champion Len Smith and asked you what was he the champion of? What are your put? Kerry. Mosaics. You think mosaics might be a sport? Yeah. You, you're close. Is it a uh, whack a mole? No. <laughs> Judy, Joel? I actually thought it was bowling. Oh, you're so close. Oh, is it croquet? Think smaller. Baby croquet? Marbles. He plays marbles. Marbles is the right oh, answer. Oh, yeah. that is a very extraordinary and extreme training to throw a couple of marbles. Uh, he was making <laughs> the marbles out of the porcelain. All right, I asked you what Derek Chisora said to confuse Dillian White. What did your put? I'll go, I'm going to go through that guy like laxatives through a bumhole. <laughs> 
That is the right answer. Yeah. Yes. yes. We said laxative. We got that. We said laxative. We said laxative. laxative. Yeah, it's laxative. Totally. And you said you got. Laxative. I got laxative. Well, let's have a look and see. It's extraordinary, and I love Derek Chisora, but this is weird. Let's talk fight. How do you beat this man? Oh, it's like this man. Have you ever taken those pills, the laxative pills? You know the ones you take, you pop, and you wait for 20 minutes. You go to the toilet, and they go through you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go through this man. <laughs> Everybody knew exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> it's pretty extraordinary. OK, I asked you what wrestler Rikishi's signature move was called. Arushin uh, Dame, what did you put? We put Stink Face. <laughs> OK, Stink Face. You've gone for Tom Carey? We went for the Arse Gripper. Oh, that's a nice one. The Arse Gripper. The arse I said the Arse Grip and he went Gripper. Nice touch. <laughs> nice, OK. <laughs> Judy, Joel? We went with Bottom Smash. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Dane, Rasheen, you got it absolutely right. Yeah. Oh. It's time for another special bonus round in honour of sports commentator David Coleman. He was known for his misuse of words and phrases whilst on air, popularising the term Coleman balls. I've got commentating gaffes for you. All you've got to do is fill in the blank. We'll do these one at a time, OK? Here's the first one. If that had what, it would have been a goal. If that had what, it would have been a goal. Right. Write down your answer. <laughs> They're making their own fun. Always. Tom, Kerry, what have you got? If that had a net around it, it would have been a goal. <laughs> That's quite a reasonable rational thing to say. Yeah, yeah. OK. Uh, Roisin, Dane? If that had tits, it would have been a goal. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, Judy, Joel? Yeah, we went for well, the obvious. If, if that had gone in, it would have been a goal. That's the right answer. Come yeah. on! That's the right answer. He said if that had gone in, it would have been a goal. All right, last one of these. This is from Michael Owen. Footballers these days often have to use their what? Oh. Brains. Brains have to use their... It's a sporting gaff from Michael Owen. Oh, uh, Kerry, you've gone for... Wives. <laughs> Footballers these days often have to use their wives. <laughs> Feels like that's part of a bigger story. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what, what have you gone for, Dane? Uh, brain bones. <laughs> OK, uh, Judy, Joel? Feet. That's the right answer. Footballers these days often have to use their feet. Oh, wow. We're coming oh, in at the end. Wow. Oh, this is my round. <laughs> OK, let's take a look and see what that's done to the scores. OK, I can tell you, in last place, with only 18 points, Tom and Kerry. Oh, OK, bad, uh, Kerry. Judy and Joel, you're catching up. You've got 23. <laughs> Roisin oh. and Dane still in the lead with 31. Oh. Well, they think it's all over, but it isn't. It's just another ad break. One more part to go. See you in five. Welcome back to the final part of the Big Fat Quiz of Sport. This is the pot luck round. Anything could happen. In 1996, Frankie de Tori achieved the near impossible feat of winning all seven races on the card at Ascot. He celebrated with a pint, which he normally doesn't do, as he's afraid he might fall in. <laughs> <laughs> the bleep test is a running test used to estimate athletes' aerobic capacity. Personally, I like to measure fitness the old-fashioned way, with chest pains during sex. <laughs> all right, time for the last set of questions. OK, we're nearly there. On the home straight. OK, the first question, it's over to Paralympic gold medalist Kadena Cox. Hi, Jimmy. When I'm not competing, I like to check out the other sports at the Paralympic Games. One of my favourite Paralympic sports has been described as thrilling and brutal, like chess with a bit of violence, and like something out of Mad Max. Can your teams tell me what sport it is? OK, so what sport has been described as thrilling and brutal, like chess with a bit of violence, and like something out of Mad Max? For question number two, I've got three iconic hairstyles from sports. All you have to do is tell me whose hair. Here's the first one. Oh, oh my God! Was like, oh my God! Who's that? He's so fit. Really? <laughs> so what's happening? Is it a different hairstyle on a different face? Well, that's Tom's face, and if you look at Tom, you may notice oh he doesn't God, have any I didn't fucking know that hair. Was Tom. <laughs> Jimmy, if I went to see your hair guy, do you think he could actually make me look like this? I think my hair guy could do anything. Yeah. For the right money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> OK, next haircut, next haircut. <laughs> oh, that's funny. OK, yeah, well... Bad. I can't believe that's me. That is amazing. I think that really suits you. Yeah, it does. All right, last one. Name the sporting star. There you are, oh, there you go. Oh. <laughs> what is the hair? It's the hair. All right, in the sporting world, what do dodgy lasagna, film director Ridley Scott and farts all have in common? In the sporting world, what do dodgy lasagna, film director Ridley Scott and farts all have in common? I don't 
I know you don't know. You'll have but to have a guess. I want you to help me, though. Well, what could they all be used for? Ridley Scott, what could Ridley Scott be used for? Oh, Alien! You can make... <laughs> <laughs> you made Alien? Yeah. How's that going to work? Alien, yeah, let's all put Alien down. Alien? Yeah, yeah. Alien. Put Alien well down. Done, yeah. Oh, thanks, well Roisin. <laughs> Next question. Here's a close-up of three different sports people. Can you tell me what sport they're competing in? That's the first one. <laughs> what sport? <laughs> Here's the second one. Yeah, that's someone, that's someone's sweet. giving birth to him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's the third one. That is the correct photo. We haven't got that wrong. So, what sport are these three competing in? All right, for the last question in this round, over to former heavyweight champion David Hay. Hey, Jimmy. Hope you're well. Hope you're staying out of trouble. Throughout my 30 years as a boxer, I've battled some enormous, incredible fighters. But no one could live up to the best ever, Muhammad Ali. He trademarked a term that would go on to be used throughout sporting history. Can you tell me what that term is? OK, so the best ever boxer trademarked oh, a term. That's, that's, that's the clue. The clue is the best ever boxer trademarked the term. What term did Muhammad Ali trademark? OK, everyone finished? Let's have some answers. I have a feeling this is going to be a low scorer. OK. Why are you being so negative? Yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, okay. Can, oh, sorry. All right. Maybe this will be great. It's okay. A Can you show? Cox? Give us a team talk. Why don't you give us a team talk? Like we're in the. We're I'll the give you the hair dryer treatment. Is what I'll give you. <laughs> <laughs> Take this more bloody seriously. All right. Kadina Cox asks, "What Paralympic sport has been described as like something out of Mad Max? What did you put? Murder ball. And you've got murder ball. Murder ball. Ah, oh, that's what it's that's called. Incredible. We called it wheelchair basketball. Oh, it's close to wheelchair basketball. It's not the like that. Uh, it's close. I, I would have accepted wheelchair rugby ah. or m murder ball. It's, of course, Team GB, a current Damn. Paralympic champions. So points, points, no points. I asked you about these sports people's hairstyles. What did you get? So here's the first one. What do you, what do you think? Who's that? Jack, Jack Grealish. Jack Grealish. Pretty boy Grealish. from England. And what have you put? We've got Jack Grealish. Grealish, Grealish, Grealish. Everyone, Grealish, everyone Grealish, Grealish. Everyone the Grealish. OK, mm. let's take a look. No, oh, he looks worse Ooh. there. Yeah, he, look, he, look, he looks tired. He's, no, he's no Tom Allen, that's for sure. He's no yeah. Tom Allen. No, no, he's no. a pin-up, but he's no Tom Allen. Not at all. Right. OK, uh, next one. Who did you put? We know she's American. We know she's the captain of the American football team. And we think she's called team. Megan Karwalski or Sheboygan. <laughs> <laughs> Sheboygan. It's Megan Sheboygan. Megan Sheboygan. Hey, Megan, where's my fucking coffee? Oh, I'm from Sheboygan. I play football. You're from Sheboygan? They got coffee there? They got coffee there. Get the fuck out of here. Did anyone else get this? Did anyone? No. 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 I knew it was we a just put Jill. It's Megan Rapinoe. Uh, we kind of we got that. Town we got Megan. We got Megan. <laughs> we got Megan. We got Megan. It's a bit. It's one of the suburbs of Shabigan. Yeah. 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 Sure. Shabigan. <laughs> and uh, last one. Did anyone? No. Uh, did you get this, Dane? Roshin? It says uh, Mario Balotelli. You got it absolutely right, Roshin. Dane. There he is. <laughs> no. It's a fucking great haircut. Okay. Um, I asked you what do uh, dodgy lasagna, really Scott and Farts, have in common? They are excuses that people have given as to why they've lost. Things. For poor performances. Yeah. That yeah. is the right answer. <laughs> what you well, we put all from Newcastle and then we put excuses. Yeah. OK, excuses. J uh, Judy, we John? We put rotten tomatoes, which means excuses. <laughs> uh, in 2006, Tottenham came down with uh, food poisoning, uh, which they blamed on dodgy lasagna. Lewis Hamilton in 2015 blamed Ridley Scott for inviting him to the Martian set for losing a Grand Prix. And in 2018, darts player Wesley Harms blamed Gary Anderson's smelly farts after he lost 10-2. Despite this, Anderson denied it. Uh, <laughs> uh, take a look at this clip. Just spoke to Wesley, and besides that, he said you were a class player and, and you let him alive in the first session. He said that it was smelly on the stage. I thought he had shit. <laughs> Sorry? I thought Wesley had farted on stage. Yeah. Did he? <laughs> he, he? Well, I think he thinks you did it. You can put your finger up the arse, there'll be no smell there. <laughs> I thought he had shit, and I went, that's dirty. It was bad. Usually, if I fart on stage, I shit myself. <laughs> wow. wow! Oh, oh my God, firing. he's dreaming! <laughs> <laughs> Who is he? That's a... Uh, Mr that's a... Darcy! <laughs> that is a level of body confidence. You can put your finger <laughs> up my arse, <laughs> and you won't smell anything. Is that, That's a level of confidence in your personal hygiene. Wow. Listen, when there's time to call a bluff, there's no better bluff than being like, you don't believe me, why don't you stick your finger up my ass? <laughs> <laughs> I asked you what sport these people were taking part in. Um, what do you get? So, this first one, Sophie McKinna. Do you know what? At first, we did say, like, air licking. 
I'm sure somewhere in the world there's an air leak in sport. There, there is, isn't it? I love you, Judy, but you're so oh, bad at this game. I love you, but you're bad at quizzes. I heard it. What? Again. You're bad at quizzes. No! <laughs> I do love you. Oh! But you're fucking shit at sports quizzes. It's remarkable. Like they, they, they go. Well, how was your takeaway from that? I love you. <laughs> I'm so... trying to be critical. <laughs> okay. What have you actually written? <laughs> Oh, we've written, oh, a, I bet it's we've that written one. a hammer. What? You've written a hammer. Okay, oh, what have you yes. written? What have you written? Windsurfing. We put windsurfing. You think she's windsurfing? <laughs> no. <laughs> she's not windsurfing. I call it air lifting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then what have you gone for? Uh, shot put. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, yeah, it's uh, Sophie McKenna doing the shot put. Second one. Okay, this is Daniel Purvis. Gymnastics. Yes. Well, you, I need to be more specific than the, that. The one that goes around the bar. Oh, oh, hang on a minute. What have you written? Gymnastics. gymnastics. Well, I mean, we can do that as well. But it's, 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 it's the rings, isn't it? The all right, half points for gymnastics. Yes. Use the parallel bar. Oh, oh, Look at the size of his arm. Look at those wings. That is amazing. Okay, Natasha McKay. Here she is. What's she doing? Ice skating. Ice skating. Yeah, we said figure skating. Mm. I think oh, she's. Wait, um, you know the sport when you your your, your dog jumps over the bars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> OK, let's take a look. <laughs> it's figure skating. Oh. Of course, figure skating. OK, David Hay asked what Muhammad Ali trademarked. What phrase did he trademark? Oh, yeah, what... Well, OK, so what did you go for? <laughs> Judy, Joel? Went, float like a butterfly, hung like a bee. <laughs> I'm the best, the best, the best, the best could be the best. I'm the best. You got to know I'm the best. OK, no. <laughs> Terry Tom? We put float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, or I am the greatest. But that seems oh, more general. Oh, so close. I'm the greatest. Dane, yeah. Rasheen. Can I give this? This is all Rasheen. I want to give it to her to say. So OK. This is all Rasheen. I'm the greatest of all time. A.K.A. the goat. Really? Yeah. He came up with the phrase goat, greatest of all time, wow. and he <laughs> trademarked it. Wow. Yeah. He's the greatest of all time. He is the greatest of all time. Wow. wow. Sure, I'm going to trademark <laughs> something tomorrow. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, we've reached, we've reached uh, the end of the quiz, so time for the big, fat final question. And to ask it, we've got footballing hero John go. Barnes. There's a total of 15 points on offer here. Anyone could win this. So, John Barnes has got... You've got, what, 79 caps for England, Liverpool legend? Yeah, 79 caps for England, I think. Uh, um, won the league with Liverpool. Won the league. With the I cup. mean, you've done everything, but all people want to talk about is world in motion, right? The rap. It's the greatest. It's the greatest. OK. Like so, so, what are you going to do for us for this final question? Right, I'm going to do a rap. And in the rap, there are going to be some clues about three very, very famous sporting people, and I'm going to do it to the tune of the England song, so you have to listen carefully right. for the clues. OK, and there's five oh, points for each correct sports star that you identify. Oh. He's going to be talking about three, three sporting sports. stars in a rap, and they've all been in a sporting scandal. OK, yes. uh, ladies and gentlemen, please take it away. Jump on. The best ever lives on the classic rap. Best players of the past have been known to cross the line. Once known to shout and abuse you with verbal attacks. There is a reason they call him the Super Brat. Next one's a smaller man who jumped and used his hand. An Argentinian in a World Cup scan. A cycling champion. His titles are all gone. He failed a doping test. Told Oprah he was wrong. The three point stars. What have you all put? Can I give him a clue? Nice. Nice action. OK. Oh, he's left so, Roisin, Dane. Uh, John McEnroe. Jo uh, John McEnroe, which you haven't written down, but you have said. <laughs> we, we wrote it. We actually wrote it down. We wrote it down, John. Where did you, where did you write it down? At we the top, but spelt wrong. How did you spell it? Mac N Ro. Yeah. OK, I'll give you that. We wrote it we wrote down, down, crossed it out. Wrote it down wrote, again. And then wrote it down again. That's how sure we were. They haven't got it written down. Okay, John McEnroe, John McEnroe. You didn't write it didn't down. Write down. Okay, so five, five, nothing. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, the second one was, of course, Diego Maradona. Mar Diego Maradona. Yes. Diego Madonna. Yes. Madonna. <laughs> okay, Madonna, Diego, Madonna. Maradona. Did you? We wrote Maradona. Tick. Yes. I was just double checking. We didn't Maradona, write Madonna. Maradona, Maradona. I mean, the handwriting is atrocious, but yes. Okay, and the third one. 
Lance Armstrong. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. We said hey. Yuri Geller. <laughs> Yuri Geller, was because it? you said about the psychic connection, <laughs> and you know he would bend spoons. Psychic? When what did was he the say line? Cycling. 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 Oh, well, I didn't hear that. <laughs> it's a sports quiz. It's a sports quiz. <laughs> 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 All right, let's check it. Let's check in on the final scores. In last place. Oh, third. Tom, <laughs> Tom and Kerry, unbelievably, you threw it away. Thirty-three points. I mean, they, you turned up. Threw it away. Happened. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Joel, you pulled it back somewhat to get forty for the winners oh, of ah. the big fat quiz of sport. It was a sports quiz the whole time. Machina Dane <laughs> with forty-nine points. Wow, it's nineteen points away. John Bryce. You present the trophy. There you, you go. Right over to them? Yeah, let's go over to them, yeah. That's it. Big thank you to all our brilliant panelists, our special guests, and thank you for watching. I'm Jimmy Carr. This has been the Big Fat Quiz of Sport. Good night. <laughs>